Jayan for treating us to such wonderful, wonderful, wonderful conference. And thank you for this wonderful food. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm, and thank you, Gerd, for being here and being in, on top of everything. <laughs> mm, I want to make a very short announcement that on Tuesday we will meet in a different room. Uh, in the operations um, room. Please look at the website um, of this conference and you see all the information there. It's very important that you know that on Tuesday we start the workshop part of this conference with dignity logs, dignity dialogues, on Tuesday in a different room and it's I think about uh, 1.30 that we start. If you want to write down something, then please write down the uh, website for our conference. This is uh, humiliationstudies.org. It's humiliationstudies.org. And then when you are there... Oh yes, you see, oh, down here, thank you. Thank you so much. Here you see down here, workshop part. You see the um, at the top. You see the pu public event parts. You see day one. We are today day two, the 9th of March. Tomorrow we will have a field trip to a Lahu village. We will be back on Tuesday and we will from then on at 1.30 we start with our workshop part. So please in the operations building on Tuesday and on Wednesday. On Wednesday will be the last day of our workshop. And then we will go to the Karen village, whoever likes to be with us, of the uh, wise elder who talked to us yesterday. So on, um, after the conference, you are invited to be with us to the Karen village for two days. So this is just for you to know about the practicality. Welcome. Yes? Where's the operation here? Uh, if you could ask outside, I have no idea. I've never been there. Okay. Is it in this building? No, it's in a different building. So the the operations building is part of the Faculty of Social Sciences. So if you're standing in front of this building, Faculty of Humanities, it is almost directly in front of you. All right, so we have three more presentations for this afternoon. I think all three of them are going to be very interesting. The first one, the topic is Refugees, Repatriation, and Representation. And we're going to be joined by Sonne Call who has been working with Burmese migrant workers for more than 10 years. And he's currently working with the Karen Environmental Social Action Network, uh, which, is, which is working with Karen CBOs on the refugee return issue. So before Sane Kong presents, we're going to watch a brief documentary about refugee repatriation issues and the importance of listening to the refugees themselves in, in setting policy. So this, this documentary was produced about a year ago by Burma Partnership, which is the organization that Alex is
าเดี๋ยวเขาเล่นต่อท่านเนี่ยท่านอยู่เกี่ยวนตีมาขึ้นมาจะจีบมีบางคนให้มาดูขันเดือนเลยพ่อเราอุ้งเดือดชวนเรื่องเป็นเจ้าฟันเป็นจีนี่พูดเลยตั้งจีนี่เนี่ยเจ้บ้านเราก็ตั้งเคไปเป็นอยู่พูดเลยตั้งแต่จุดเดียวมันจะมีแบบดีชุดดี The main message that I got was that they do not want to be forgotten, and certainly I would like them to understand that we are not here to forget them, and that we will do everything possible to make the situation better.
they are going to send back to refugees to Burma. Also, Thai government, they are forced to go back to refugees to Burma. Yeah, this one is like we we never I never met the UNHCR, but I heard a lot of people talk about this one. And I couldn't even go, but that the military did not. But the day was enough. But that the government should be enough, and I could do that. The funding also food ration had been cut because uh, there will not be any support for the refugees who choose to stay, only for those who will go back. So different rumor. So we don't know whether it is real or not, and then it become a war in the refugee camp. But of course also, amongst the communities, it's difficult for them to have all the information to see the full picture. So many rumors float around that it's, it's a very, very challenging time. And also there's a survey in the camp by the Thai government asking you like whether you want to stay, whether you want to go back, or whether you want to resettle to the third country. Then people started to worry that someday we have a... Well, the, of course the fear is natural. You can hardly be a refugee who hasn't had direct impact in their family. Someone that has been tortured or the house has been burned and someone has killed them. Everyone has had that. So it's, of course, very difficult to, 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 to believe in anything at this point. The people, uh, the people in the camp, they are free, they are free scared, they are free sad or something like that. They are afraid. I think in any context, you and Asia should be the voice of the refugees. We should be speaking up and advocating on their behalf. We should be reflecting their concerns and meeting their needs, whatever they are, because this is what we're here to do. This, I mean, refugee protection, refugee assistance is our bread and butter. It's it's why we're here. For the and the they they are the only organization, the international organization, they can deal with the government. Just from our history with uh, working with with both governments, um, I hope that we do have a lot of sway and we we do have. Um, some international pressure, whether it's to respect basic refugee laws or humanitarian laws, I think we, we do bring that out of value. So, if they want to speak on behalf of the refugees, they should be um, cooperate, closely cooperate with the community and the refugees. Uh, the, the exchange, the meeting with the UNHCR, 
Asia, they became they show us the map of the Bermuda Vision Society. I was surprised. Um, what uh, I have learned about the uh, refugee region, so in the uh, international principle, uh, refugees themselves, they, they have the right to choose place or uh, to make the decisions. But uh, here, they are already prepared. I think I'll have to probe into that. Uh, I don't know enough to, to talk about it. I had heard about it in passing, but I don't know what the history is. My understanding is that it was, it's a government, Myanmar government proposal, and I don't really know, to be honest, what our role is. I don't think we have to rule, but because whatever happens in, in Myanmar, um, when it comes to displacement sites and places of origin, as we call them, um, that tends to fall in their the whole UN interagency coordination. So it's not purely a UNHCR project. So I, I would be quite doubtful about the whole So we, when we saw their document, we request them to share with us a copy, but the, the, and they now they didn't share with us. They said, uh, and also when we, we write to them, I think they have a plan for our request to get a map of uh, the European site. But then they can be shared with other organizations. I don't have this map, and I'm not sure how to get it. For refugees, we not believe that place is safe for all of us. Maybe, even though the government and uh, the Venezia authority plan to set up a relocation site. They should ask the refugee themselves go and visit the site. But it would be interesting to know how do they determine where those relocation sites are going? Do they, do they provide information on that? Is this their pick or is it the government's pick? Or, I mean, who's making the decisions on this? In terms of relocation sites, you know, that sets up a whole set of issues uh, that, once again, are being decided in, in, in closed door rooms. You know, will that relocation site be, for instance, a temporary receiving shelter for people to go further? Or will it essentially be moving the refugee camp from the Thai Burma border into a specific place in Burma where people will then be primarily expected to stay there? You know, what's in the cards is, is, is completely uh, unclear now. Past uh, one or two years, we heard about the contingency plan of Indonesia. But at the time, even though we requested for the information, where well, we can be part of the process, but we've been told that uh, this is just the start, the beginning. So we should not be part of this yet. And then for the CEO, we feel like if we are not part of it at the beginning, how will we, like, how can we like uh, follow up on later? So we were trying to play a coordinating role uh, because the people are already talking about it um, and we feel that we need to coordinate it so that there isn't um, misinformation, there isn't pressure for people to go back prematurely, there aren't rumors and then panic. And then the, the, they are kind of a one to control it. The other one can lead to this project. And also, they not believe community organization can lead to this project. But for our community based organization, we think that this process we can lead and, and also we can organize our people. I think, from what I've heard from colleagues in Mason, it's going pretty well. I mean, I think we meet regularly with government authorities, the Thai authorities, we meet with the CPOs often. Um, the refugee committees. Uh, I know we meet regularly with the BBC, um, with the. I can't, sorry, I can never remember the, the acronym. I asked Minister about the consultations uh, with refugees regarding repatriations. Uh, because from my visit to the field and meeting with a different group of refugees in the camp, they 
express their concern that they have exhausted all of their attempts to consult UNESCO regarding the activities or get information from UNESCO. We have asked the UNESCO. We request them to have a consultation with the Kepler Disease Organization formally. So we request them to come and talk to with the community-based organizations. But the until now, that we stay over two or three times that will be performed, but uh, we don't get any reply from the UNESCO. There seems to be very, very little attempt to try and be inclusive. And not being inclusive to me is to maintain, even emphasize and reinforce the victimization process. And it doesn't help uh, that UNHCR is not doing more to uh, place the refugees at the center of this decision making process. I mean, ultimately, the, the success or failure of a repatriation is going to be determined by whether the refugees return voluntarily or not. And we wish that this repatriation could be destroyed in the sense that we have refugee led repatriation program. And if that can happen, we could actually turn a historical page on refugee protection. So it is hard to say if we are trust them. Because if we want to make a trust each other or build up our trust, you have to come up closely and slowly and slowly to to come closely to each other. But I feel now is we are still far away from each other. We are now saying without us, nothing about us, without us. So this is our call at the moment. Again. Yes, uh, actually all my presentation will be more related to the, the, the videos. Um, firstly, I would like to introduce to you with our, we, we call it KCB, Korean Civil Based Organization. It is, uh, it is a group that are gathering with a uh, uh, different group that are working in the, in the border mostly other Korean civil groups, so we call it a KCBO. Actually, today is Diagla, Ram Diagla used to, uh, supposed to come, but I, but unfortunately, she couldn't, she couldn't come, so I, play, I come here to present about uh, returning, what is the refugee concern and about the re returning and refug refugiation. Firstly, I will, we're going to introduce a little bit of uh, KCBO. As I said, it is, uh, we are coming from different organizations, uh, mostly are from the current civil, civil society group in the border. Mostly are working in the, like a health issues, education, and uh, emergency relief, and, um, and also like an uh, environmental issue where, where some come from. Yes, I'll uh, yes, speak very briefly. So the, the topic that um, I'm going to talk to you this morning, this afternoon, is mainly on three topics: uh, current situation and, uh, and also the concerning of the refugees, 
and uh, and also would like to explain a little bit of uh, KCBO activity regarding to the uh, refugees returning and what is our concern and what uh, for our recommendation. Yes, yes uh, current situation and concerning. There, there are altogether nine, nine camps in uh, along the Thai Burma border. Uh, and uh, according to the UNHCR reports, and said that um, altogether there are almost uh, 140,000 refugee people as living in the camps. And um, in that, uh, within that, uh, 85,000 officially registered from by the UNHCR and. Uh, 50, 55,000 unregistered, yeah? Yes, uh, Curtis, um, in 2008, uh, the Burmese government have uh, doing the referendum uh, for the constitution. So after that, in 2010, it, uh, the election, the Bur Bur Burmese government hold the election. So after that, as uh, as you were listening to the presentation uh, this this morning about the after after the election and after the reform, that, that something has to be changed. But uh, as I said and as discussed in the conference, like it's very limited, it's very little change. But anyway, that uh, you can you can, we can see very clearly that. Uh, um, uh, Inter international uh, start reducing uh, cross-border aids funding to the local NGOs and uh, and also the EU and US government has also reduced support to the NGO so it's becoming a difficulties for uh, for the, the border base groups and also especially for the refugees people nowadays we can see that um, uh, the ratio or the food has been reduced and the money has been flowing to inside Burma, so they stop a uh, cross-body cross firm. So that is a big effect. And refugees not allowed to uh, look for a job, and to the very few jobs are support opportunity. So in the refugees, people have no job. Uh, they, they are not allowed to work outside the camps or inside the camps. So that is, you can imagine, that is a problem. And then again, in the same time, they reduce the ratio from the from the TBC or other organization. Uh, in two, since 2011, and also education support in the camps has been also reduced. So for it is for the education part. And then the the Burmese and the gov uh, Thai government, I mean the Burmese government and Thai government do not recognize the education system in the camps. So when the young people have finished their school in the camps, they, have very, they don't have uh, opportunities for further education. Um, yes. They have very little op opportunities. Uh, yes, as I said in the beginning, the NGO has been reduced health support in the camps. So it is also a big problem for the people who live in the camps. Yes, other uh, ration distribute has been reduced because of the curtain of funding and extra rates. Yes, it's also becoming a big problem. Many of the refugee donors see many change in, in central Burma and want to reduce the funding in camps and move into Burma. As we said, yeah, people say that okay, everything is changed, good now. Burmese government is now practicing the democracy, so the country is good now. So all the donors or all the uh, funding agencies have moved to Burma, not interested in the in the crossing uh, crossing uh, border issues. Um, Yes, as yeah, as I said, as also already mentioned, the TBC have reduced some uh, uh, food and ration and the UNHCR groups. Uh, and also in the all the time, it is in, it's not time. To, uh, the even the UNHCR has always said that it is not time to uh, to return the refugee back. Uh, yes, but uh, in the in um, 
In, on the other hand, as I said, that is, they reduce many things like uh, food or uh, health issue, so that it makes people are living difficulty in the camps because they have no job. So it's become a big concern for the refugee people whether whether to go back or whether to stay in the camps or whatever is uh, becoming a big threat and uh, big concern. And then they, they are worried that uh, they will be forced to be back uh, without anybody consulting or them or causing or uh, explaining the situation to them that is also a big worry for them. Uh, okay, this year I would like to ex uh, tell, talking about a little bit of uh, our city of mainly focusing on refugees return and also the ongoing peace process between the Burmese government and the uh, KNU or other, also other ethnic groups. We are, we are the groups, the KCV groups are having discussing on, it's like a monitoring the peace process on the peace talk between the government and the, uh, the arms groups. And that is, all, uh, that is what we are doing. And also we plan for our uh, other activities like a discussion or consultation, something like that. And this is uh, this one one workshop that we are doing with the KCBOs, which is we exchange the information about uh, returning for the refugees. And uh, now that uh, we we plan for uh, like a, we were going to do a refugee surveys and also like a land assessment. Land assessment is like a uh, for. Now there is a rumor that uh, the Burmese government are building the, the place for the refugee to be back. So we, the survey here is we are we, uh, we're going to do like whether is it safe for the refugee or not, or a good environment or not for the refugees. Awareness raising. So what we're doing now is the, uh, we share the information with the refugees about the the news or which is related to the returning issues. Um, and also fundraising and uh, monitoring and advocacy, which is just uh, that is part of our activities. I mean, that's KCBO activities. Yes, uh, and also another activity is like uh, regarding the, uh, we met with the uh, UNACR, CCSPT, and NSC diplomats many times. Uh, so we, we are talking for the refugees, and as you said, the movies also is also part of the KCB activities. So, like I said, uh, the rumors that the Burmese government placed uh, have uh, uh, setting uh, selected the place for the refugee like a. Lethal Yando Bakali Bakali Bonkali Most of these places are, are uh, in in uh, I mean, more in control of the Burmese government and also it's also in the with this place are more mostly are uh, when they are, they said they were going to do the uh, industry zone, which is the, uh, they said they were going to put the refugee back in this place so they don't need to to worry about job or whatever, they, they will ask the refugee to work in the factory. Actually, when you go, we see the the, uh, the background of the refugees. They are not coming from the uh, factory background. They are they are working on the field. On the, they are the farmers or something like that. So when you when you can imagine when you put them in the in the uh, uh, factory factory zone to to act that to become a factory workers, it's not possible. It's uh, really vulnerable. Uh, as I said, um, international donors are, are now are focusing on the, uh, are moving there. Like, uh, for example, like Jap the Japan government has a Jakarta project. So they're going to do a big, uh, like a construction road or dams or uh, factory zone there. But uh, they are not thinking about what the effect is for the people and also for the refugees. And then after you know, after the peace talk or after the election, the Burmese government always uh, announced that they were going to, they are welcome the refugee back 
uh, they are ready. So actually, the, uh, the and also the Thai government also wants to set the refugee back. So that is a little bit after the, after the ceasefire, the situation we see, I discussed in the money a little bit. Uh, so the first one is the Burmese government increased the armies in the, in the areas when the, when the refugees uh, come from, mostly in the current state. They rebuild the army post and uh, shelly the mortar in the village. Uh, stay uh, fighting in Kachin and Shan state. And also some small fight have become uh, restarted in the current state. The, the big issue is land money stay there, so not impossible to send the refugee back. So that is our concern that we are called for the action. Uh, before to send the refugee back, uh, is a political resettlement must be in place between the ethnic revolution, arms group and the Burmese government. Second, when the nation was ceasefire, including a code of conduct and a meaningful enforcement mechanism, must be agreed upon all fully enforced. Uh, the safety of refugees and access to food, transportation, education, land, and job must be enforced. There must be a proper water sanitation, which is a regard to the environment, uh, healthcare and educational bills on existing system where possible must be available in the case of, of return. The whole process of the return should be well consulted and inclusive. Information regarding refugee return should be dismissed uh, in a context with a local language. Uh, the preparedness of return among stakeholders should be transparent. Uh, we would like to encourage all of you to, to help uh, advocate for the refugee communities and ensure that KCDO is well consulted and included in the decision making process of refugee return. That is uh, what we have calling for. I mean, the KCDO are calling for, for refugees. Yes, thank you very much. That and who puts them? That yes. Of course, uh, actually there is both side, both the government and also both the, the arms groups. Uh, they put the landmines all all in the areas. And who makes that? Sometimes it's, uh, it's made by the arms group themselves, and most and uh, for for the Burmese, and also from the sometimes made by the others countries like the US or China we use by the government. Like the landmines in Laos to find out the written on there is made in the US. That's why I'm asking you where the landmines in Burma were put in the different uh, yes of course sure that uh, the landmark that the, the government are using is is uh, when, they, uh, when the Burmese can put the mine, the landmines, it can stay forever. It can work forever. I mean... There's writing on there. There's always writing. It tells you where they're from. So are they from China? You know? A actually, because yeah. I also doesn't know well of this, uh, but I, of course, sure, I think that is not... That is from other country, and also sometimes in the Burmese government, the middle of But uh, when we saw on the, on the, on the picture, yes? Like mostly, uh, they say the U.S. or something with the letter of U.S. China. Or something. So the, you talked about the KCBL undertook a survey of refugees' <coughs> feelings about their return, and can you talk a little bit more about the results of the survey, and also if the answers have changed over time from 2012 when you started 
the survey until now? How how have the refugees' feelings about returning home changed over time? Yes, um, the surveys are. Uh, now that what we are doing, like I share the information to the refugees communities, and uh, the service we are we are say on the plan, but uh, all the questionnaire or uh, is already prepared. Yeah? But uh, we have uh, we we are going to work together with the PRC, but uh, that is uh, stay on the preparation process. So, yeah, you can answer your question. Uh, well, in general, can you give a, a little bit more in-depth explanation about some of the refugees' feelings about the possibility of them returning to Eastern Burma? Yes, um, uh, since the room, there is a lot of rumor that uh, refugees should return or refugees must uh, be sent back, and also the reduce of the ratio from the NTPC or from other groups. So, Refugee people are a bit worried and concerned about uh, to return, and also some people, they, as you will see in the movie, some people said they don't have any land when they go back home. So how can we can they do? So that is also a big concern from for, for the refugees. And uh, yes, uh, land issue is also a problem for even those the IDP also couldn't go back home. That is also the big person for the for the refugee at the moment, and also they didn't get a, a real information from other NGC whether yes for sure you, you will go back or not. It's not clear. Always be with friend, yeah. Yeah. Some of you who just came to the meeting, and my name is Chayan Botanakudi, teaching at this university. And also at this moment, I'm leading a project to study about the participation for participation in the preparation for repatriation, commissioned by the Thailand Human Rights Commission. I'll talk to you later about this. But a few points. First, Thailand has nervous has not been a signatory state on the UN Convention of Refugees. So the, in the past, we, Thailand has been uh, <clears throat> assisting uh, the camps on the humanitarian basis, uh, allowing UNHCR to, and other CDOs, including KCDO to, to help the refugees in the Thai camps. I think one of the nine camps has been almost closed in Kachanda. Now, uh, I have, at first, I have a, a preconception of the camp as something with barbed wires. No one can go in and go out easily. Uh, but that is also, that is also true in some camps. But in many camps, I have seen people who live in the camps, whether you call displaced person or refugees, can come out to work in town or in the neighboring villages. So the, 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 the fairness of the camp is not closed 100%. It's a porous people can come and come out, particularly through the back gate. And uh, in Mesot, for example, there are people who are living in uh, refugees in Mela camp or Lupo uh, camp can also come to work if they have some connection, if they have a good relationship with local communities. Similar to Ban Tamin in Rashtur, there are some refugees who are living in camps who have a very good relationship and also good business in running uh, the business uh, in the camps and outside the camp. Some of them work in the town. So uh, <clears throat> it's, it's not a concentration camp as we may imagine. Is that correct? Is that right? <clears throat> uh, second, the Thai government 
that's not recognized in any case. The system in the camps is true because the, in fact, Thai, Thai Minister of Education, Thailand Minister of Education, does not recognize the uh, educate the high school system, education system in Burma because the number of the school years in Burma is less than the number of school years in Thailand. In other words, those who finish high school from Burma has to have to take an extra year or required to take a what we call GED in order to enter to universities. Although, but, but, that, but in the past four or five years, Chiang Mai University under the Faculty of Social Science, we have received students from the camp, inside the camp, outside the camp, from, from, from Myanmar to study with us. Uh, about 15 students each year for the last two years. They are doing well too, but better than Thai students. Now, uh, I cannot speak about the night, the refugees in night camps because I have not been to all of them. But there are quite different in Sydney. With regard to their, uh, what do they think about repatriation? Of course, many of them do not want. Well, many of them, many of them would like to go, to go, but. They do not know where to go, as you said. The, the land, for example, the village, not only their own land, their village where they live has been taken over by other people. Not only the not only the soldiers, but also other people. And being of course uh, lots of that money. <clears throat> um, in some in, at least in one case in Tamil in Kashmir. They are ready to go. They have even shown me a kind of tentative plan, map, where they would like to be, to be resettled together, despite the fact that they have come from various villages in the Dolai area, what we call it, Tanyari in the water watershed. But there'll be, there have been some discussion to be, to be, to resettle them in one large area, which is under the control of KMU. So the issue is not only with the central government in Burma, the issue is about the armed groups which control the area as well. The people in that camp told me that they would like to go, they would like to return, even, even though it's not, they, even though they cannot go back to their own original village, and sometimes they have moved from one place to another place. They want to go, they want to return only there is a real peace. So what does it mean real peace? It means that uh, well, let minds has to be demined, exactly. <clears throat> peace talk has to be uh, has to be done. But the question whether KMU and the uh, Tapador what, 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 it so much depends upon the negotiation between K and the Tapa. How they can settle, uh, how, to, how can they uh, agree upon uh, the part? This is a little known the situation in the chain. In the case of K and U, people are not sure whether they can build real peace if they, are, if, they are, if they go back to them. And about the, the, what they have been, what they have told me is that uh, the training that they have, that which which have been provided to them, they are not confident that it would be appropriate for them to live, uh, to, to to carry out when they go back to them. For example, the bicycle repair thing, or bakery, training in making cookies or hair doing. So what can they do if they go back to them? It's not a skill for them to work there. So there are, uh, 
uncertainty about whether, whether, whether they are ready to go, but they are uncertainty. They are uncertainty ahead of them. Of course, among this, there are some people who, who would prefer to remain here because they have lived there for a long time, particularly the young people. There's no sense of home, unlike the old generation where they can still remember where their home is. But for the young generation, they are brought up in the camp, not with the Burmese or Burmese education system. Some of them cannot speak the language. <clears throat> and many of them have been working or being educated in Thai Thai education system or education system in the camp, perhaps it's not enough for them to go back to use their education for their for, for working in certain jobs. Yeah, it is quite I, I think when we talk about refugees in this Thai camp, they are quite heterogeneous. Let alone the conflict, for example, so as Garrett mentioned about conflict between the Muslim and the Buddhist, there is already, has already been some concern about that. The Muslims in the world, maybe they should not return if there is such a strong Buddhist chauvinism. They may they prefer to remain in the camps or remain in the side. So that ethnic conflict is also important. It should be actually. so that they can shift resources elsewhere or what the, the reasoning, what the, the power dynamic there might be. And then the question of course is what is the impact then on leaving the refugees as internally displaced people where the Burmese government is then in charge of their well-being instead of the international community. So yes, uh, part of the UNHCR, so I, as you may see the Ramu Dayak interview. So like, uh, yes, now it's like uh, the UNHCR and uh, I mean the Burmese government <laughs> working together. So it's make the, the, the refugees are not believing in the UNHCR what the UNHCR did for them. It's like that. So they're not trusting for, well, with the UNHCR. Sometimes, uh, like I said, uh, when the, the UNHCR like I said, we, we, we don't force the people to, be, to go back, but it's voluntary, voluntary return. So 
but uh, in uh, in the other hand, they uh, when they, they reduce uh, eggs or fernae or uh, ratio, so it made it uh, difficult for for the people to stay in the camps. So yeah, that is a uh, still now becoming current situation, huh? and also Thai government also wants to send the refugee back. Yeah. That is one thing, and, and also uh, I would like to add. Um, I actually I agree with uh, Aja Chayan about the the situation in the camps, like uh, jobs for the refugee. For sure, uh, even those um, uh, the refugee are not allowed to go out or to work outside the camps. But as Aja Chayan said, uh, sometimes the refugees go out to mess or the work. But I, I want to say that they, for sure, they go. But it's illegal, illegal. They are not legal. They are not legally. They are going as illegal as the uh, the migrant worker, the illegal migrant worker who are from Burma. So they can be arrested any times. They are in the vulnerables. So I mean, when you go out to work outside the camps, and also now sometimes when you go out the the, the camps, uh, and maybe. When you are away, uh, the UNHCR or the the uh, TPCR they come and examine where you are not. If you are not, they cut your your ratio. So that is a uh, when you come back, there's no ratio for you. Or the UNHCR will take away of the UNHCR re your register. It is also the problem. And re regarding to the uh, the education, of course, uh, when people when the young people in the camps. When they finish, they have to uh, um, do the exam, uh, GED. Yeah? Sure, but uh, as a, as in the presentation, it's only very a small chance for for those people, for the young people in the camps. Not everyone to uh, can go to, can come to Chiang Mai University to study. Very few, very few. That is one. Uh, another is for the a refugee to go back. Sure, all the refugee people wants to go back home with safe. And uh, with safe, if not safe, they do not dare to go at all. At all. So we can say that even though the uh, the Burmese government or Thai government has talking about repatriation, and the Burmese welcome the refugee back, but on the ground stay fighting, stay a landmine. Even though the IDP cannot go back home, so the the picture is not safe yet. We understand that why the Burmese government would like to see the refugees go back so that they can, they, this can be a feather in their cap, they can say, we've done so much to reform the country and end human rights abuses and decide ceasefires that now there's no, it's not necessary for refugees to live outside of the country. But can you clarify why does the, why are the Thai government and the UNHCR eager for the refugees to return and for refugee camps in Thailand to be closed? Yes, uh, that is uh, like always the Burmese government said, say that no refugee, in, no refugee. They always say like that. And That I think I think they want refugee back and before they become a chairman or before the election. So that is the prepared one thing that the reason that um, the Burmese government want to show the uh, uh, positive to the international organization. 
but, but all of those things are related to the Burmese government. To what advantage is it to the UN and the Thai government to have the refugees go back to Burma? Is it, do you, what the team was suggesting was, is it that the UNHCR would like to allocate their resources that are currently going to the refugee camps in Thailand to other programs? Do you think, can you give your insight into what do you think is the motivation for the Thai government and the UN to want the refugees to go back to Burma before they're ready? Um, that is also for my analysis. Maybe they are, uh, yes, I, I don't know how to say, uh, because um, uh, as I said, they are, into, the also the, the donor also restrict the firm that is also maybe always they always say like that and um, I'm not sure maybe <laughs> the government has uh, something behind with between the the Burmese, uh, between I mean the Burmese government have something between uh, behind the uh, with the, between the UNSCR or and or Thai government or, well, which is we doesn't know that's why we we now are calling for the, the, we want clear, the refugee people want clear information. If, if one day the UNHCR or any international funds will dry up and you will get support from the Thai government, would you be able to sustain yourselves in those camps or otherwise? They're thinking that this may be possible one day? You mean in, in Thailand? Yes, I, um, for, uh, if, if there is a uh, full right for the refugees, because now Thailand doesn't agree that uh, these people are refugees, it's only a displaced, yeah? displacement. So, uh, without, without full of refugee rights, maybe it's not, available, it's not possible to survive in here for the long term. Because uh, Thai government is in science, uh, refugees uh, declaration. Yeah. But if, if full of rights, then 